got a light fire lick session. It rained quite a bit in Boulder today, as you can see in the trails. Uh, but yeah, just some light fire lick. Eight times one minute on, one minute float steady. Maybe the float will be around six minute mile pace, or I don't know, I think that's like 350 per kilometer pace. And then the steady, hey guys. These guys are awesome. <laughs> Actually, it's not raining too much. It's not windy, so it's really good. But the trail's got muddy, so out at like the Boulder Res, where I usually do this workout on the dirt roads, it's really sloppy. I want a good footing with the tracers on, and want to be able to run under marathon pace on the one minute surges. So that's kind of the idea. Eight times one minute on, one minute steady, and then a uh, three mile up tempo run, maybe at like 5:30, 5:20 per mile pace. So I think that's around 3:20, 3:25 per kilometer. So a little slower than marathon pace. Just to get the heart rate going, uh, get the legs going close to marathon pace, and feel good and not tax. So I did do that mile repeat workout. It's pretty tough. Oh, sorry, mom. I know your babies are right there. And, oh, she's bothered because uh, I'll leave you guys in peace. Sorry, baby. Uh, hey, baby. <laughs> mom's mom's protective of her baby. Understandable. She's trapped on the other side of the fence. Hey, baby. Hey, how's it going? You keep it real out here. It's kind of rainy and wet, huh? Oh, I scared you. Sorry, you relax. You relax, buddy. Beautiful view of the mountains you guys got out here. Really like it. So yeah, I mean, that's the idea. Training update. I'll taper the mileage again. We're a week and a half out from Copenhagen Marathon, so do you got to taper the mileage a bit and uh, try to get in maybe, I don't know, some warmer weather running. Hopefully it'll be sunny again here in Boulder. It actually doesn't rain that often. This feels more like Boston weather or something, but it's not really that cold. Uh, like I kind of joke around in my Instagram post that this is the outfit I should have worn at Boston during the race because uh, usually in those conditions I would but again with the podcast we'll get into this but trying to run low five minute mile pace or 12 miles an hour in a full on rain jacket like this which is what I wore at UTMB and stayed very warm is crazy with the wind resistance and when you're breaking the wind and the pack's thin you're trying to go for maximum speed it's hard to run that fast with uh, this much drag and lack of restriction, long pants and things like that. So I see a lot of elites at Boston didn't wear enough clothing, which of course, if you get hypothermic and drop out, your muscles shut down, that's that's a trade-off. So it's tough to balance with something that I'm not used to personally or run a marathon. It's such a tough condition. So hopefully the weather at Copenhagen, because it's a loop course, the wind won't be in one direction. That's for sure. Hopefully it's not too wet and cold, and hopefully it's not too hot, because I'm going for time again. Hopefully there's you know some guys in the pack, just having guys a minute or two ahead of me, some really good international guys running 217, 216, is also very motivating, as well as the Elite Fluid Bottle Support, so I don't have to carry all my Spring Energy Canterbury. I could drink my Electro Ride as planned. Uh, but yeah, this idea, I'll do the Light Farlick today medium long run this weekend a week out maybe 14 miles real easy relax keep the metabolism up keep from gaining weight really and losing fitness i have to do that to maintain fitness especially as i taper my mileage to maybe about 70 75 miles this week i'll put how many kilometers that is uh would it be like 120 kilometers maybe yeah that sounds about right uh so yeah we'll say hi to the cows keep you updated on the training we flying out it's you know it is tough with the long travel time and the time change and i considered that when considering marathons but i think copenhagen is really the best bet and i'm honored to be able to go there and uh try to give it my all still get in this side goal otq it's kind of a selfish goal like i said i'm obviously not a sponsored road marathon runner i'm sponsored to be a mountain ultra trail runner so we'll get back into that this summer season this is a side goal but you know some ultra trail runners like to ski in the winter. Some ultra trail runners get hurt in the winter and don't race. I like to do road training in the winter because I think it works on my speed and hopefully I can apply that to the mountains faster than the transition of coming from the mountains and going to the road marathon. But I love the variety. I love any service, any distance. I love distance running as a sport in general and I see it all as a distance running endeavor. It's a great challenge. It's a great goal. It would be my third Olympic trials if I could qualify before uh, 2020. So that's always just a huge incentive and goal. And to be nationally ranked in the US in the road marathon, you know, even if I'm not top 20 or top 40, it's still a huge honor to me. And it's personally important to me. Uh, I like mixing it up. And I know a lot of you 
ultra runners and trail runners like to mix it up in road marathons and I met a lot of you at races like Boston so I think that's really cool uh, but yeah so I'm gonna talk on that uh, try to stay healthy feel free to comment below future training talk topics and stuff you'd like to see about hear about more content suggestions constructive criticism things like that hope your running is going well stay tuned for more sage running videos